Southbridge is a definition of what community is. Everybody kind of knows each other, so it becomes a big family. That, that's what Southbridge is all about. To me, Southbridge is one of the greatest communities that you could be reared and grow up in. People in South Wilmington know each other. People in South Wilmington care about each other. And they're an organized community. There is just a determination in this community. We want things to be better for us, and we're willing to sacrifice time, energy, and effort. These people have been working on making their community a better place long before we got there. And they really set the stage for us to come in and to really focus the efforts. Southbridge is an isolated community in the southern part of Wilmington. It's separated from downtown Wilmington by a river, um, accessible by only a couple bridges that are not pedestrian friendly. But it's very close to the downtown. You can be in downtown Wilmington in about five minutes from Southbridge. Historically, it has been sort of its own, own neighborhood, its own place, distinct from the rest of, of the city, and possibly forgotten a little bit by the rest of the city. There is a high percentage of lower income families. Um, there is some subsidized housing. And with that comes um, the need to improve social capital of that community to be able to have a fair and equitable voice in decisions that are made about their community. And because of their social conditions, because of their um, economic conditions, and sometimes because of race, there have been a history of perhaps not having um, fair and equitable consideration in how we deal um, with the policy issues, with investment issues, and with other issues that affect the well-being of this community. Southbridge does have a lot of environmental challenges. It's surrounded by mostly brownfield sites, uh, abandoned industrial areas with a legacy of environmental contamination. When the children leave that community, if they go out into the open spaces around them, um, they're in areas that are not toxic to the point of a Superfund site, um, but at least at a level that's chemically challenging and an area that really needs to be considered and cleaned up. South Wilmington is in a floodplain. Just about the whole community is at least in a 100-year floodplain. Some places can anticipate more frequent flooding than that. Drainage is terrible. Part of that's infrastructure issues from the city's old uh, sewer infrastructure and water disbursement systems. I can recall when South Ridge had over 800 housing units, uh, had uh, neighborhood stores that provided quality services. Uh, those things do not exist currently. Things that along the river were always industrial. So all of a sudden now, here comes this uh, young group uh, Puccini Brothers, Poland Group, and they build uh, apartments, they build townhouses. Now all of a sudden South Wilmington is hot and everybody wants the property and all this new development's coming around and we don't want it to change the fabric of the community to where as the people who live there can't afford to continue to live there. Usually what happens in public planning processes through nobody's real fault is everybody wants to claim public involvement. Neighbors are shown some two-thirds to three-quarters to 90 percent finished plan and ask, don't you think this is a good idea? Or how might, how might you change it around the edges? Well, that's not what happened here. DENRAC had some resources. They wanted to look at the water management issue. But then they came back and said, well, look, why don't we look at the broader issues other than just drainage? Uh, and that's what we really <laughs> wanted to hear. We wanted it to be very community directed. We did not want to go into this community and say, this is what we see. This is what you need to fix. Um, because what we see as problems in Southbridge are not necessarily things that Southbridge residents see as problems. Instead of telling the community what we're going to do for you, they ask the community, what do you want done for your community? We recognize that some of these are very deep entrenched problems. Um, some of them um, we're deeply entrenched with trust of government and, and a long history of um, feeling disillusionment with government. You said that we didn't want this just to be another plan that's going to be a piece on a piece of paper and then set on the shelf. We wanted to make sure there was an implementation and funding and resources at the end of it was no use of us sitting down wasting the time to have this conversation. 
people don't spontaneously trust. There's no reason for them to. And especially people in communities of color who have so often been promised the world and given nothing. And so everybody outside, black, white, or green, has to prove their intent and their sincerity, not by what they say, but by, in fact, what happens and what they do. Very unusual. It came from an unusual source. It's funded by uh, a federal agency that I never knew had any relationship to cities or their issues. And this is the first time in their history as an agency that they have supported a planning process like this for a community that happens to adjoin a port. DENRAC came in and everything just sort of fell in place for everybody to work together on truly trying to make a neighborhood a better place to live and also to save a neighborhood from development. A lot of people ask what an environmental agency is doing in there, but you know, quite frankly, uh, when you look at serious environmental problems, you can't disconnect environmental issues from economic issues. There's a direct connection between the health of the environment and the economy. And when you're in an urban setting, as, as South Wilmington is, you have the socio piece of having people there, too. The way that we have gone about planning and implementing the Special Area Management Plan is with a core management group. And that group directs the efforts that we do. At each of the core group meetings, there are representatives from this community sitting on that core group for input and decision making. We get a certain amount of money from NOAA every year and we talk about the projects that need to be done, the plans that need to be written, um, and collectively we determine what we're going to fund either by prioritizing projects, ranking projects, and then voting on them. Maybe a three or a four for the last one given that problems with operational expenses to start? From the time there was a commitment to create a plan, there was an approach to neighbors at their door. They were told by somebody who knew that gaining their confidence was important. It wasn't uh, a facade, it was to gain enough trust to get good information. I think that's the most important thing, the community has been at the table, and not just one or two, but a nice strong uh, representation of the community has been at the table to um, be in the discussion and development of the SAMP plan. And so there was quality discussion, there was quality conversation. Maybe the word is respect. There was front-end respect. And people know that when they see it, and they know it when it's absent. That transparency is absolutely critical when you go into a community, um, an underserved community, um, a community that may have a history of not feeling that the government serves them well. And the way to really overcome that is you just want to at least make sure that they know every step of the way what you're doing, why you're doing it, and that if they want to have a say in it, um, you give them a chance to speak up. I, I don't think that uh, anybody else could speak for us but us. But I know that SAMP has given us an opportunity and opening doors that uh, we would be able to use to uh, make the decisions that we have to make. For one of the components of the Special Area Management Plan, which is the Neighborhood Plan, we brought together about 100 folks one day to take a look at each of the recommendations of the Neighborhood Plan. And these were people who were not just core group members, they were people who had not been associated with the Special Area Management Plan before, but had skills, knowledge, abilities, and money to bring to the table. We got together and talked through each one of those and figured out what it would take to get that implemented. Who would be involved? Who would have to fund it? Whether it could be implemented or whether it was something that was a high priority in the next couple years or whether it was something that might have to happen 10 years from now. The SAMP created a document that will give validity to any of the recommendations and also allow private investors and folks to know that a lot of resources, a lot of deep thought went into pre preparing it. And it gives sometimes the people who have the resources and the money um, a comfort zone to know that everybody's working from the same uh, playbook. DENREC's already moving on the water uh, drainage problem uh, for the area, but we're going to move on the housing area with WHA. Uh, so it's going to be, I think it's really made a lot of difference. 
and also brought more trust people with each other because they worked together and it wasn't done because it had to be done. It was put together because it made sense. Having the SAMP planning underway, it, it says that uh, South Wilmington is, is equally important that what happens here and that some of the benefits of that development can spill over into, the, into that community. We're going to start on those things that we know we can actually get done that fit the plan, those things that are long range that we don't have the resources for, then we'll plan out how to get those resources. What's coming out of the same plan is, is the development of the, of the individual person themselves. Our goal is to take that low income community and nurture them and empower them. We don't want to be left out in the development. We don't want to be taken for granted in the development. And we certainly want to have some say in the development. That's the root of South Wilmington, of the all South Wilmington, is the South Bridge, the, the neighborhood, that's the heart. If the heart died, the rest of us gonna die. No matter what, South Bridge is gonna change. And, and South Wilmington is gonna change, and it's gonna change significantly. Um, but I think the increased awareness, the fact that all parties are beginning to at least talk about these issues, um, increases the likelihood that everyone's needs will be considered. A lot of times there's a hesitation on the part of agencies, uh, government agencies in particular, to involve community members and devolve, involve other agencies from the beginning of a project. This project shows that when you get everybody involved at the beginning and you get all the issues worked out, you can clear the path for implementation in a successful project. It takes a little bit longer initially sometimes. But when you're ready to roll with a project, you know that all of your project partners are with you and they're ready to help make that project a reality. SAMP is the best, the most comprehensive, the most community involving planning process that I've ever been associated with. And it's that good because it's real. It really did take into account the opinions, wishes, hopes, beliefs, dreams of folk in this neighborhood. I'm proud of what we have been able to accomplish together with DENREC. Uh, they work very closely uh, with us and they feed us a lot of good information and they take a lot of good information back. It, it's been a very compatible relationship. And uh, we're grateful because it has brought very broad range of unusual resources to look at what South Wilmington can be and that's, that's been a great experience. Thank you.